Okay, Papa, Steven, and Gar Kites for Juvenile Muhammad Muhammad. The weekend of January 20th, 2013, I discovered while well, when per- perusing the Angar Pipes that Central Intelligence Group and OSS man Ransom Ludwig Eng's early career included work on juvenile rehabilitation for the San Diego community in the 1930s. His article, PWA Working for the Children, was published in 1936 and is highly indicatory of his dedication to helping young juvenile offenders. His later post Okinawa research included detailed observations of Okinawan school system as a part of the naval research in Okinawa with anthropologist Marshall T. Newman, who eventually taught at Portland State University. Through looking at the CIA's generous foil material, I found that Ransom Ng's resume included work with the Workers' Progress Administration getting unemployed women in data computation and criminal statistics in the 1930s in San Diego. His work looking for communists in the San Diego school system is also notable as his intelligence work appears to predate the Central Intelligence Group and his role with naval intelligence. I hope to piece together a better biographical chronology. What is that news that Richard Helms will retire him upon Nixon's accession? I have been told that he regularly consults with Linda Johnson. His work in CIA recruitment may be considered a demotion. However, many letters of praise exist in the unscanned archives regarding his tours of universities explaining the important work of the CIA. He worked at Atomic Energy Commission, oversaw the inconclusive wreckage of Roswell, and was chief of science at a time and worked Latin America until in the 1950s. His work in CIA training films is revealed to me through photographic stills in the archives. It is my understanding that he never betrayed his security clearance or revealed any information pertaining to national security to the family. My father was out of contact with him from 1969 to 77 due to political differences, but which obscured the fact from my father that Ransom Eng was early retired with the most notorious blunders of the Nixonian or, or Nixon regime. My father's mistaken belief Ransom was embroiled in the Nixonian catastrophes and my, mom, my father mistakenly believed Ransom was embroiled in the Nixonian catastrophes and so retained a familial cold war of his own. At that time, Ransom and Get Helen had moved back to California to live briefly in Del Mar, the most beautiful neighborhood in San Diego. At some point, they moved back to D.C. The most funny story my mother tells me is the shock upon meeting them for the first time in around 1977-8, to eight, when the chandelier in the D.C. hall was so big it might obliterate many humans. She had no idea who or what they were, or my father's life was a CIA's brat. Now, why this occurs to me is essential to relay. Oh, here comes lunch is in observing the FBI's predation and entrapment of juvenile Muhammad in Portland, Oregon. Ransom Eng's pre work to help juvenile into a better way enhances my overall impression that he was geared towards humanitarian aims and respected the rights of the child as a future founding member of CIA. I imagine that Ransom Eng would be appalled at the unscientific methods of the FBI sting traps in this modern idiocracy. I view FBI's fraudulent waste of taxpayer money to entrap suicidal teens from Africa as a betrayal of my grandfather's legacy to this country and my mother, Anne Eng's significant dedication to psychiatric nursing at the Veterans Administration. Why is PTSD of families fleeing bloodshed in Somalia not assessed as a child protection issue worthy of specialized attention? How can U.S. aid inspire rule of law in Bulgaria when Judge Gar King is so willing to rubber stamp racist predation and human rights violation in Oregon? My father worked as a pediatric social worker on the war on poverty in the 1970s, giving community college enrollment for single mothers in need of social support. Sadly, the atrocities of Reaganomics act such humanitarian-oriented approaches to family support. Now, curiously, as the FBI turns a Somali suicidal teen into a cash cow for the larger budgetary concerns of the Joint Terrorism Task Force, I'm surprised at the lack of concern for the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the lack of concern for juvenile protection, child protection, and the medical intervention, and eliminating racialized or religious harassment when FBI steps in to abuse refugee families and their children. I am saddened that FBI agents do not have the moral fiber to whistleblow this dangerous course. I'm saddened that the terror factor will not be brought to a screeching hall in town. Yeah. yeah, someone else is going to come and assist oh, me sure. in the hall. Oh, sure. No so rush. This stuff oh. is here. Well, we don't want it to get cold. So oh, we'll that's so here. sweet. Okay. Oh, thank uh-huh. you. I'm, okay, it was Monday. Oh, let's see. The good word. I'm saddened that, that the terror factor will not be brought to a screeching halt in time to prevent more tragedies such as this. The good work of Lisa Hayes, Stephen T. Wax, and Stephen R. Sadie cannot be lauded enough as the entire Portland ideological lockdown fails to assess how virtualized child abuse and racialized hate crime and medical abuse is wrong. 
It was Monday I saw Stephen R. Sadie overhearing me speak about the human rights crimes under MK Ultra. It is a sorry state that the FBI is allowed to repeat sim- similar mind control experiments on unwritten subjects to reprove the brainwashability of young, vulnerable mind control candidates. Yes, we know humans are easily brainwashed, susceptible to violent cults. Why must FBI behave like a cult? Instead of de escalating violence and providing medical referrals for suicidal teens, they religiously abuse a vulnerable infant teen. This religious impersonation is the most blasphemous contradiction of the principles of religious freedom upon which USA was founded. Sadly, the FBI proves nothing new and is stuck in an unfair ultra mindset of experimental methodological mistakes which we should transcend. But now the biomedical ethics community is too sold out to condemn the lack of preventable, preventative care which could have reduced threat of violence, suicidal tendencies, and cult mentality in the young Muhammad, thereby sparing the FBI. FBI, this PR catastrophe of medical malpractice. I believe ransoming would be disheartened with the failures of FBI to ho- uphold a higher code of conduct. It is for his ghost I write. Mary Rose Lenore the ransoming, 1 February 2013. Temple Papa.